Hello, everyone. This is the mind of Lilith, and thank you for joining me today as I take a deeper look into the most recent episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville, season eight, episode six. I will not be recapping the full episode as there are plenty of other content creators who do an excellent job talking about the show. Instead, I'm going to focus on specific segments of the episode that I believe could be used as teachable moments for myself and the audience. Firstly, I wanted to post this earlier today, but I was so busy with other things that kept popping up. Um, I'm finally able to record it now. Um, So hopefully you guys are still interested in this week's review. If not, it's okay. So for today's podcast, I wanted to discuss Trisha's relationship with Ken. And it seems to be a bit complicated because Trisha has been separated from her husband for at least five years. And she's been dating her current boyfriend, Ken, for about two years. And Ken has been very open and honest about his feelings for her and his desire to eventually get married sooner than later. He told Courtney, uh, Stormy's husband, that he's not willing to wait five more years or five years for Trisha to make a decision. And to be honest, I don't blame him. If the marriage is over, what is she waiting for? So like everybody else, I started thinking about why a woman would stay married to a man while openly dating somebody else and on national television at that. Um, You know, when I watch Ken and Trisha, I can't help to think about Martell and Arion because for years and years and years, Martell kept telling Arion that he wanted her to be on the show, but she's not on the show. Not that I want her on the show. I really don't. But Melody was saying that uh, she didn't have any power to not have Arion on the show either. Um, I think it would be bad for ratings if she was allowed on the show. But Trisha is still married, yet she has her boyfriend on the show. She's not embarrassed of him or ashamed of him. Martel was ashamed of Arion to the point where even today he hasn't even claimed her three years after his divorce. But anyway... So yeah, during the episode, I started pondering about why a woman would stay, you know, married to a man that she's not in love with while she's dating somebody else. Now, what I'm about to say is not necessarily fact. I'm just speculating, right? And so for today's podcast, my curiosity will be the premise for a much needed discussion about why women stay in toxic or dysfunctional relationships past their expiration date. Now, before I share, you know, some of what I was thinking about uh, as it pertains to this relationship issue with Ken and Trisha, I saw a couple of pictures of Trisha's estranged husband, okay? And if she's married to the man that I saw in those photos, I'm going to be honest, that man is objectively very attractive. He's very handsome. Now, that doesn't mean that he's automatically a good catch. I'm not saying that, Um, but he is an attractive man, objectively speaking. And I'll even say that he is more attractive than Trisha. I'm not saying that Trisha is not attractive. She's a beautiful, brown-skinned woman with a nice body, a nice personality, a nice head of hair. She's a pretty woman. But in the world of dating, her husband will be considered an eight or nine by many women's standards, and Trisha will be considered by many black men's standards as like a six or seven, depending on their preference. Now, back in the day, my great aunt told me that her husband told her that average men with average salaries prefer to marry women who look like a six or seven, not an eight, nine, or 10, because more beautiful women are less tolerant of infidelity or mistreatment. And they have so many men who are willing to do whatever it takes to get with them that they don't really have any tolerance for disrespect or not being treated as if they have options. So basically, the more beautiful you are, the more attractive you are, the more options you have, the less likely you are to put up with somebody else's BS or their inadequacies, them not having enough money, them not being loyal, so on and so forth. So they'll marry the cute, safe girl, the six to seven even, um, over the supermodel, but they may still lust after the supermodel and see her as like an upgrade or, uh, you know, a trophy or a prize, which is why when these men level up financially, you know, a lot of times they end up uh, divorcing or cheating on their cute wife with somebody who would be considered a trophy to them, right? So, you know, 
even though the rules still apply for eight, nine, or 10, if a man has lots of money, he will have, he feels like he has more leverage in the relationship. So men can leverage their money while women can leverage their beauty, okay? Now, the last part I added myself, my aunt didn't say all that, but um, essentially when I saw the photos of Trisha next to the alleged husband guy, um, I was like, yeah, he's objectively more attractive than her. He has a lot more options than she does. Doesn't mean she's not attractive. I'm not saying that at all. It just is what it is. So back to the possible reasons why Trisha has not gotten a divorce after five years of being separated from her husband. The first possibility is maybe she's still in love with him, even though he allegedly had a baby on her. Allegedly, from what I saw on social media. Again, her husband is quite handsome and a lot of men and women are more tolerant towards partners who they consider to be more attractive than them. It is easier to find like slightly mismatched pairs of couples than two people on an equal level looks wise. You may see a four with a six or a seven with a six, but it's rare to see two eights or two tens together. I mean, you see that in New York, you know, more often than not, but it's not as common. So this is, I think, one of the reasons why both Martel and Melody were fascinating to watch because on a physical level, they matched each other's fly. They both looked like they were on the same level with each other, okay? Melody is gorgeous and Martel is objectively attractive even though his personality is trash. We cannot deny he's an attractive man, period. So I said that at the current moment, Melody and Martel both ate physically. I'm not talking about other important factors like integrity, intellect, respect, loyalty, morals, character, just straight up looks. Martell and Melody look like the Ken and Barbie archetype, which was part of their lore for the audience, right? It certainly was for me. I'm like, wow, these are two really attractive people who work really well together. They have beautiful children. They were the quintessential black love couples goals ideal that most black people have when they visualize a power couple in our community. So when they broke up, it was devastating, not just because of the trauma of that relationship ending, but because, you know, they shattered a fantasy of that archetype of the beautiful, young Ken and Barbie power couple, black power couple that was building generational wealth. They were role models in their communities, all this other great stuff. Right. But and like I guess I think Martel now wants someone who physically fits his image the way that Melody did, which is why he's hesitant to get with Arion because he doesn't feel like she matches him um, either socially, financially, or physically. Okay. Now, Trisha's husband is more attractive than her, not by a whole lot, but enough for him to feel like he can get away with certain things because she would be so enamored with his looks. So the first possibility is she could still be in love with him, which is why she hasn't divorced him yet. The second reason I thought about was finances. Is Trisha still married because she wants to run the clock to be entitled to his like social security or pension. You know, this is one of the reasons why a lot of wives stay in, uh, in dysfunctional abusive relationships because they want veterans benefits or pension or other entitlements even after the divorce. They don't want the next woman to get her man and his money while she's left alone to be old and broke. Um, Miss Wanda is still married. She bragged about having a husband and a boyfriend because more than likely she still wants access to that man's pensions and his social security when he passes away. She doesn't want the next female to get it, right? So maybe that's the second reason. Trisha may not want to rush the divorce because she still wants to get paid even after the divorce, especially if they haven't been married for 10 years yet. That's the possibility. And this brings me to my third reason, which would be another woman. Does Trisha not want to get a divorce because she doesn't want another woman to have him? And I don't think it's just any other woman. Would it be a specific woman who she is basically trying to cock block or prevent from getting with her ex-husband? Someone like an enemy, like an Arion, like a mistress who tried to take her spot like Arion did with Melody. So allegedly, um, Trisha's estranged husband had a baby on her with another woman while they were married. And they're still married, of course. And if this is the case, is Trisha vindictively staying married to prevent the side piece from getting her husband? Is she staying married to make sure that even if the side piece marries her ex-husband down the line, that she as the first wife who was married for a certain period of time 
is still entitled to his financial benefits. And this kind of brings me to the main point of this podcast about women being vindictive when it comes to their relationships with their men, especially as it pertains to other women. I've said more than once that a lot of women will put up with a raggedy man to make sure that the next female does not have access to that raggedy man. Even if the man is abusing her, he's mistreating her, he's dogging her out, that is her man, that's her property. So a lot of women feel like it's an honor for them to be dogged out by their husbands because at least he's doing it to me and not somebody else. So he loves me enough or he cares about me enough or he notices me enough to want to do me dirty. So if he's ignoring me because he was somebody else, that's worse than him beating my ass, him taking my money, him cheating on me. All I care about is his attention. It doesn't matter the quality of that attention as long as the attention is there, right? A lot of women have that mentality. That's why these men can get away with doing whatever they want to do. So I don't think it's necessarily vindictive for Trisha to stay married to her own husband. I mean, she has the right to stay married if she wants to. That's her husband. But it does become sneaky and vindictive when you're holding up another relationship with Ken, who, you know, at this point appears to be a good guy, patient, accommodating, loving, nurturing, supportive, wants to commit to her, unlike the fuckboy uh, Moses. You know, he's not playing games with her. He's serious about her. But it, it isn't vindictive when you're holding up something with somebody new because you don't want the side piece to get married to your ex-husband or to be entitled to his financial benefits. I'm not saying that's what she's doing, but Trisha is very mum about why she hasn't filed for divorce yet. And if she's being mum about it and she's not speaking about it, then it must be something that is either silly or underhanded because there's no reason why you're still married to a man after five years and you're seeing somebody else in public unless there's some other underhanded reason for you doing that. And again, she's entitled to stay married as long as she wants to. That's her husband. But now if there's somebody else in the mix, if you're dating another guy named Ken, who's a good man, it's not fair for you to stay married because you don't want the next female to get his benefits. I notice a lot of Southern women do this. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it now. A lot of Southern women stay married to men that they're not even with for decades. And it could be religion, it could be culture, but I think it's also financial too. They don't want the next female to get his money. So, uh, okay. So anyway, yeah, I, you know, I don't think it's vindictive for Trisha to stay married to her man, but it's not fair to Ken to kind of string him along if she's, you know, playing this kind of tit for tat game with the mistress, allegedly. So if the side piece was like Arion and she vindictively got pregnant by a married man, thinking that that would make him leave his wife, Trisha. Is Trisha wrong for denying her husband a divorce to prevent him from fully moving on with the mistress? Like if a mistress got pregnant by your husband on purpose to force you to divorce him, would you do that? Knowing that she's gonna try to swoop in and take the credit for all the work, time, energy, money, resources, patience you put into this dude to level him up to the point where somebody like the mistress would wanna be with him in the first place. So I absolutely understand why women like Tisha would stay with Marcel because she was with him when he had nothing. And her mama is going to tell her based on what she told Melody not to divorce this man so somebody else can take credit for everything you built with him. All the money, the homes, the, the clout, all that stuff that you that you've acquired with him. Somebody else can come in and swoop in and take that from you. Hell no. So Tisha, like many traditional Southern women, will stay married to a man not just out of love or commitment or loyalty, but because they don't want the next female to get what they feel like they're entitled to. That's the reality of it. And the men know this subconsciously or consciously. They know that their wives are staying with them out of spite. <laughs> so <laughs> that's not all women. I'm not saying that it's not all women, but you know, but anyway, you know, is Trisha being vindictive by staying married to prevent the mistress from claiming her husband, potentially? Most women will not have a baby by a man if this is true. If Trisha's estranged husband had a baby with somebody else while he was married, okay? If Trisha's husband had a baby on her, 
for me, that means the mistress wanted him for herself, whether she knew he was married or not. And I think that if the relationship had enough time to progress, now there's a possibility that she could have been a one night stand. I don't know. That's a possibility. But more than likely she wasn't. Okay. They could have had a prolonged situation and affair. I think if the relationship had enough time to progress to the point where the alleged mistress wanted to have a baby, just like with Ariana and Martel, she had a baby after five years of sleeping with him. If they have been dating long enough for her to feel comfortable with getting pregnant by him, right? Which means that their relationship could have been going on for longer than a few months or years, potentially. I'm not sure. I'm just speculating here. Um, it could have been when I stand that things happen, especially when women get older, they get desperate. You know, a lot of women will, will have a baby by one night stand when their biological clock starts running out. So that that's a possibility too. But suppose that wasn't the case. Suppose this has been a long-term affair that was happening between them. Um, at some point, the mistress would have known that this guy was married because married men move differently or committed men move differently. You know, they can't keep up the facade of being single for longer than a year. And why not? You got birthdays, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's. If your man keeps missing these important um, holidays, then more than likely he's with somebody else or he doesn't care about you at all, period. So a lot of women say, you know, if the mistress wants to play the vindictive, I'll have a baby by a married man game, allegedly, then married women like Trisha have every right to play the I'll make sure you stay a single baby mama because I'm not divorcing my husband just so you can have him gang. In fact, this arrangement may actually work for her estranged husband as well because it's cheaper and easier to keep her if he's doing his own thing anyway and she's doing her own thing. But now things are getting complicated when Ken is involved because Ken wants to legitimize his relationship with Trisha by getting married which I will say is commendable. Now, I'm not the biggest proponent of marriage at all, but I'm not fundamentally against it either, especially if the relationship is healthy, nurturing and productive for both parties, not just one person. So, you know, I actually like the fact that Ken is taking this relationship seriously and he's showing a good example of what a man does and how a man acts when he's serious about a woman. Hence, Arion. This man isn't beating around the bush, making excuses for why he can't commit to this person, even though she's married and in a complicated situation. He's still sticking out with her, being patient with her and making sure that, you know, he's giving her enough grace and space to figure things out while still showing that he's interested. Right. Yeah. I like Ken so far on the show so far. So, you know, Trisha's tight jaw. It looks like she's holding on to her husband out of spite, which is why she's so quiet and so cryptic about what's going on. She told the ladies at the, the party that uh, the papers haven't been filed yet. And since the process hasn't been filed yet, whatever the case may be, because I think that once she legally files for separation, the clock stops in their relationship. So if she's waiting for financial benefits, something like that, 401k pension, then they have to stop the clock at the separation, I believe. I'm not sure I've been married. That's a possibility. So her tight jaw is not just tight because of her personality, but she's being very mum and cryptic about why she's still married, what her motivations are. And she hasn't told Ken yet, or maybe she has, and he's just, you know, playing along for the show. I don't know. But I can understand why a woman would hold on to her husband out of spite, especially if a mistress would intentionally have a baby with her husband to force her to divorce him so that they can have their happily ever after at her expense. I understand that. Would I do that? I don't think I would. I've never been married. I don't think I'll ever get married because, you know, I'm paranoid and I really have nightmares about getting married to the wrong guy and being stuck. But I understand why a woman would do that. Um, it may be love. She may still love him. She may see him as a trophy. She may be doing it for financial reasons, but she, I, if there's another female involved, I think that will be one of the reasons why she's like, okay, I want to make sure that if I leave this man, I'm still entitled to his paper. Or if I leave this man, he won't get with her. A lot of women will say, listen, I'm going to make sure your child stays a bastard. You're not going to take my husband. So then it becomes competition hunger games. And the men say, yeah, more drama for me. So 
When it comes to attractive men, it's the Hunger Games in these streets, whether the man is single or not. And a lot of women will do anything to have a baby by a pretty man, regardless of the consequences. Again, Kid is not unattractive at all. He's a very handsome guy and I like his personality. But Trisha's husband can make money being a model, while Ken would be more likely to make money because of his hard work and skills, which is not shade because I actually prefer men like Ken, right? A loyal, hardworking, patient, good man over Trisha's pretty boy model husband types. Flagrantly pretty boys who think they're doing you a favor by being in a relationship with you because there are so many other desperate cutthroat women like Sunny and Arion who would do anything in their power to get their claws on your man. I would rather be with someone like Ken than Trisha's estranged husband, to be honest. But he's very handsome, period. And so I'm sure he's used to women throwing themselves at him and women who are desperate for a baby who looks like him. And so they don't even care about hurting the other female. So if that's the case and there was some beef going on like that, which I'm not saying is true or not, I'm just speculating. Just speculating because I have been looking on social media. I have been following the story intentionally. I'm getting little bits and pieces here and there and letting my curiosity and my own imagination fill in the blanks. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. But, you know, yeah, it would make sense that she's staying married for any of those three reasons. I still love him. I want his money. And I don't want nobody else to get him. <laughs> or either or. It doesn't have to be all three. It could be two out of the three. You know, whatever the case may be. So while I do think that Trisha is wrong for stringing Ken along without telling him what's going on and being transparent, if my speculation is correct, I understand why she's staying married because Trisha has more of a right to stay married to her husband, even if he had a baby on her, than the mistress does to demand or expect Trisha to get a divorce because of a side baby. I remember when Melody was married to Martell and Arion would say Melody was stupid for reconciling with her husband. She was stupid for having sex with him and having another baby. Now, she wasn't saying Melody was stupid because Martel was abusive and dysfunctional. She was saying Melody was stupid because she thought Martel was in love with her and didn't want to be with Melody anymore. She thought Melody was stupid for not getting out of the way to make it easier for her to take her husband, essentially. Yet here we are three years after the divorce, a side baby and 10 years after the affair started and Martel has never claimed Arion publicly. Mistresses tend to have standards for wives that they don't have for themselves. A mistress will tell a wife she's stupid for staying with her husband while ignoring how stupid she looks fighting over a man that's married to somebody else. And that's because a lot of women don't really care about the man that they're with. They care about the idea of who the man is, using him as a pedestal to step on so that they can look down on other women. And that is not always the case, of course. But considering how many women stay with abusive and dysfunctional men until their ego gets destroyed with the mistress and the side baby, I'd say a lot of women are married to the ego validation of being a wife instead of the actual man himself who in many cases is quite boring, but useful. He's a useful social status tool. But you know, he ain't paying you no attention. He barely helps you around the house. He's begrudgingly, you know, giving you compliments. He's mum, he's disrespectful. He's not really giving you the same affection that you used to get from him. Like he's, he's boring, but he's still useful as a weapon against other women because that's the name of the game for most pick me women competing against the next female to look better than the next woman. I don't understand why that's the case. I'm confused about that. But logically speaking, I understand it. I do understand that men are a resource. And if you invest your time, energy, effort, body, youth, age, whatever, into a resource, into a resource, you want a return on your investment. So you don't want the next female to come along and take credit for all the work you put into this guy leaving you hanging with nothing but baggage, bad memories, bad debt, health problems, stress, while she gets to basically have the better version of the man you built. A lot of women don't want to deal with that. That's a very painful thing to experience. So, you know, I want to hear from you guys. Do you think Trisha is staying married for reason number one? She still wants to be with him. Reason number two, financial incentive or reason number three she don't want nobody else especially a mistress specifically to get him because of vindictiveness and spite 
I personally don't think either of the reasons are wrong or right. That's still her husband. She can do what she wants to do. That's her man, basically, legally, on paper. Uh, it's just that now with Kenneth being involved or Ken being involved, it wouldn't be fair to him to play that game if she has no intention of like leaving her husband, um, her, her estranged husband. That's the only person who's getting hurt here, in my opinion. If a mistress had a baby with her husband and he knew she knew he was married, you get what you get. I can't feel bad for you at this point. Kenneth is the only innocent party in this. Ken, I keep saying Kenneth. Ken is the only innocent party in this situation. So, yeah. All right, guys. I look forward to reading your feedback. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll speak to you soon.